Harlem Sonny Larry. Didn't you? And he used to be the best of friends. We're still the best of friends. No, you're not. Who says we're not? Sit somewhere else. Now, if I've done something to you, just tell me what I've done to you. Well, you didn't do anything to me. I just don't like you no more. You didn't like me yesterday. I recently watched the film The Banshees of Inishirin, a film I had not previously heard of, but had a very interesting trailer. A good friend had coaxed me into watching Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and this was the same director. So we booted up the old HBO Max and planted ourselves into the story of a fictional, isolated Irish island. First things first, the film is very good, and I highly recommend it. I noticed that this director has a habit of telling half a story and allowing the audience to imagine conclusions that were never told. And I am taking a liking to this open-ended style, embracing the ambiguity and an unusually satisfying lack of satisfaction. What struck me as I watched with my friend was that we had opposite instincts about what this film was going to be. My friend comes from a very deeply religious background and was confident that the story was never going to fall into the supernatural. I have spent most of my life with a more skeptical, agnostic perspective, and I was deeply convinced that there was some form of mythic devilry afoot. I don't want to spoil the plot of the film, so I'll go ahead and say that it allows for more than one perspective similar to my earlier film thesis about the Grey. So why would I, harboring doubts about the existence of demons, spirits, and divine intervention, so readily expect that within the premise of the film? Is it because in the domain of fiction, I feel more comfortable for such entities to operate? I've come to realize that I deeply enjoy characters that embody abstract aspects of life and humanity. The wolf in Puss in Boots' The Last Wish, for instance, or better yet, Lorne Malvo in the Fargo television series. My friend, as a person of faith, doesn't need to insert the divine into stories because there's a grander story that has been given to us and affects us in everyday life. The assumption within stories requires less transcendence because true salvation is found elsewhere. Is it possible that myth-making increases with those who have a more skeptical view? Pursuit of monsters that provide a form from the chaos of life. Isn't it ironic that the power of these influences would be increased by lower philosophical acceptance? I'm not sure, but it's something I noticed. Some minor spoilers to make my case. First, the man who ends the friendship is a violinist, calling to mind the legends of fiddlers or guitarists selling one's soul for musical talent, like Tommy Johnson in Oh Brother Where Art Thou, The Devil Went Down to Georgia by the Charlie Daniels Band, even referenced in a classic episode of Futurama. This might explain the self-destructive threats and behavior. Secondly, there are frequent shots of farm animals, notably including goats, calling to mind Black Philip from The Witch, and also imagery of Aphomet, the demon. There is some subtle imagery mixed in that may call to mind the Grim Reaper, the Inferno of Hell, and the puppeteering strings of fate. Lastly, and most obvious of all, there is the old crone who literally beckons at a woman with aspirations to leave the island, predicts death, and is avoided by the town and she sits in apparent amusement at the personal strife between former friends. Howl away like 
a banshee in the comments below and a late happy saint patrick's day to you the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist and like that he's gone